Hello everyone, this is Caitlin and today we are making an 1860s straw bonnet. Alright, so I want it on the record that I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I have made exactly one straw bonnet before, it turned out okay. But, um, yeah, we're gonna try this. So I have here, I'm not exactly sure what this is, it's not necessarily straw, it's got some timely tresses, and it actually is a very good approximation uh, for horse hair bonnet. So um, this is what I picked. It looks very close to the original from what I can see on the Met. And you don't have super high resolution on the Met um, for that particular photograph, but it looks pretty close. And so we're going to try this. I also have here um, the Timely Tresses Eliza Coretta pattern. And um, this one looks similar to the shape. I already had the pattern. So it looks similar to the original. So I figured I had those pieces. I might as well use them to help me with this. And I also actually have a um, actual straw bonnet that Danielle at Timely Tresses made, and I just trimmed it. Let's see if I can get it here. But it's here, sort of. And so I'm kind of looking at this one as well to kind of see how to put the straw together. It's gonna be interesting. Now Danielle did hers clockwise, it looks like, um, at least a straw pattern. The original I'm looking at for that I want to copy, it goes counterclockwise. So we're gonna do things a little differently, but we are gonna try it. So I think I'm gonna start by making a little ball. And I can't quite tell how the other bonnet did it. So after this, I can just keep going in, in the round for a while. And then we're going to have to eventually work our way up. It's like cutting the pieces off for the bottom bit. Maybe it's just a matter of like really pressing it with your fingers because that seems to be working. I'm glad once I get the form done because I know how to, um, you know, line and face and do all that. It's the actual straw work that I'm not quite familiar with yet. But at least we got it in a circle now. Try to keep it as straight as possible and because it's wanting to you know, fold itself in and out and that might be a need to get it wet and let it dry flat thing. I took my timely tresses pattern. I'm using um, the Eliza Coretta in the 1861 shape I think and I traced those pattern pieces out onto scrap paper. So like here's the brim. I didn't do the tip but here's the crown. Wait no that's scrap fabric that's not helping. This is the brim. And so what I'm going to do now is um, machine stitch this braid on top of my pattern piece and then I'll rip the pattern piece around it since it's just paper, it'll rip really easily. So I'm using paper that's very thin, something that's going to rip easily. And what I think I'm going to do, this is the first time I've done this by the way, so this is all just theory right now. But I'm, this is the part where the, um, you would sew the buckram pieces together. I'm not gonna do this part, I want that to be fully in the round. So I'm going to start from like right here, build my way up, um, and then when I attach the tip, which I'm doing by hand, um, I'll just keep going around till it fits this piece. But this uh, brim part, I'm going to do the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on sewing that. Um, sometimes it helps if you're working with straw to um, put it in water for a little bit to kind of soften it up. I haven't decided if I'm going to need to do that or not. So um, we shall see, but I'm going to go ahead and stitch these together, um, get some pieces, and then we can sew them all up and hopefully have a completed bonnet. Alright, so I got the brim done. It looks pretty good. Um, I do need to trim up the back side with real quick. which point we'll have an actual working brim. I'm going to need to you know, trim away all the, or pull away all the paper. Which I can do while watching a show, I think. It comes off pretty easily. So yeah, we'll have a nice little brim there. I'm working on the, um, the crown. I don't know all my bottom, bonnet parts, okay? So this piece, 
because I don't want to do this part yet as we discussed I needed to go ahead and mark where I should be starting because I've been go working my way up it's what I did on this one it's what I did on the tip that I'm hand stitching so I just need to make sure that I'm doing this correctly and can um, uh, instead of going backwards for this piece I need to go forward so I just need to mark that so I did that I'm going to go ahead and stitch that up and then pull paper off of pattern pieces so that we can get this all stitched together all right, so I'm over trying to wire this form. It's turned out pretty good. It is longer in the back, like this area, than the original. But other than that, I think the shape is okay. So um, wiring, I have my millimeter wire here. And I'm just sticking it between these two um, pieces that I put on, I guess. And just using a whip stitch. to attach it. And really after this it's lining um, and finishing parts, which is the fun part. If you don't like, if you don't want to make your own form, which I totally understand because this is not fun and I actually really don't like doing it myself, um, Danielle at Timely Trust is does sell them finished. <laughs> Uh, and you can buy them like all sorts of ways. So you can like buy the pattern and do it yourself. You can um, buy just the form that's been wired. So basically this piece right here, finish it yourself and trim it yourself. You can buy a finished bonnet and uh, just trim it, or you can buy a completely finished bonnet. I had to look through the stash to see what I have for like lining and uh, facing. And I think I'll probably use tarlatan for the lining. And facing, can, it needs to be some sort of white silk. At least I think it's white. I'm going to look at the original. Okay, so maybe black. It looks like it very closely matches the um, straw itself. So, okay, I will find something. So I am facing the bonnet, and I apologize for the lighting. Um, we're in the middle of a winter storm, we're to be, and we're supposed to be conserving power, so I'm working with like very little light right now. But, um, the original, I can't tell if it's lined in face, but it makes no sense why it wouldn't be. Here, I gotta turn it this way to work on it. So, um, clearly it's not lined, clearly it's not faced with white. So, um, I chose black, that way at least it would look like the front part of the original bonnet. So I just had a little bit of black silk. And I'm just sewing it on. Not very well, but I, I think it's getting sewn on. And then I have tarlatan to line it with. We're trying to keep that in white just because it's going to be back here and really won't be noticeable. I'm also kind of using this uh, lining here facing to hide the wire because there are spaces where you can see the wire in there. I don't think y'all can, but. Um, when it's out here it's noticeable so I'm trying to use it to hide that you can't see it from the front because I made sure to hide it from the uh, I guess it's really the back of the bonnet but back here but on the inside I had a hard time doing it so I figured this would be a good time to kind of hide all that so when looking at the original I saw that there was some type of lace at the very top of the frill and um, so I decided to kind of replicate that with some lace here. I had some net type lace and I had this stuff. While looking at the original, it does not appear to be a net type lace. It looks very different from the actual net of the frill. So I decided to go with this one. And I've just been doing a running stitch, attaching this. I can't tell if there are two layers of the frill or three because it's... Um, Pleated. It looks like there may be two, but in parts there may be three. I'm going to go with two and see if that kind of provides the amount of frill that I like. And so I have one of these made up already. But really it's just folding it in half so it's extra secure. And I'm finger pressing it. <laughs> and then... Just sewing this on top. It is snowing like crazy outside, which like never happens in Texas. 
I've lived here 27 years, and this is, I think, the first time that this happened two, uh, two times in the same year. So this is very unusual for us. But I've been enjoying spending some time getting some sewing done. Probably had a few extra days to do so. Stuck in the house with the dogs. And of course the cat as she runs past. So bonnets have been my project while I'm just sitting here at the house. Working on this one and I'm going to start an 1830s one. Actually I started the 1830s one. I'm going to continue working on the 1830s one. And that'll come out in a couple weeks, or that video will come out in a couple weeks. It is, uh... I think every time I, I do my own straw bonnets, I say, I'm never going to do this again, I don't like doing this. And like, two or three years later, I just, oh, you know, it wasn't so bad, I can do that again. Okay, now I have it on camera, I don't ever want to do this again. I'm just going to pay Danielle to make all my bonnets for me from now on. I don't mind trimming them. Like, I actually like the trimming part of it. I just need to buy bonnet blanks. But I have so many bonnets. I don't need any more. Who am I kidding? I always need more bonnets. I need a late 1850s straw. Okay, so my goal is to eventually have, because I'm weird and I like lots of stuff, I want to eventually, for every time period that I do, have one straw bonnet and one silk bonnet. So I have two silk 1830s bonnets and I'm about to have a straw, so 1830s will be good. I have a silk 1840s bonnet. I do not have a straw one, but I do so rarely do 1840s, I can probably get away with it. I have a sun bonnet for that time period, so I guess I really don't need one unless I start doing more 1840s. That'll be going on top of the list then. I have a straw early 1850s bonnet, but I don't have a silk early 1850s bonnet. That may have to go on the list eventually. And then I have a silk late later 1850s bonnet, but not a straw one. And then my 1860 bonnet, I just have a lot of those. I know I don't have a straw one for like post-war 1860. 1865 like that empire little bonnet but honestly I so rarely do those events I don't really need a straw one of those I think well actually I do have a straw one because I have the blue straw one okay I forgot about that one all right so that one's good so really it's just maybe a few 1850s bonnets but really I don't necessarily need them I have a bonnet for every time period which is the important part now that the lace has been sewn on, I am pleating it. Um, I'm not even measuring, honestly. I'm just kind of guesstimating, making them look somewhat even. It was just seemed like it was going to be too much effort to measure this. And honestly, who's really going to notice? So I did one really long piece that's going to go all the way around the brim, and then two shorter pieces that are only going to go up. That are only going to go up on the cheek tabs. And the very top is going to be covered by uh, florals and that sort of thing. So I wanted to leave enough room for the flowers. And now sewing the frill into the bonnet. Or attempting to. I'm not really good at this part. Although I really do think that ha if I had a upholstery needle, one of those little curved ones, this would probably be a lot easier. But, nearly done, so it's okay. And over here, I try to just whip it on this side. Hopefully. start trimming it. So I think we're going to start with 
the little ribbon that goes across the head. And then uh, work on the curtain and then flowers. Okay, so let me find where I put my ribbon. There it is. So I have this um, probably a little bit wider than the original. The original may have used three inches. I was guesstimating when I bought it. <laughs> so, yeah. So it looks like the original has it started. And I can kind of pleat this a little bit perhaps to make it a little bit smaller. But then it starts like right here. Let's pull that under. I'm we'll still this in later. You know, I just wanted to get it pinned to where it'll look good. Okay. Move the camera up a little bit so y'all can see. We're going to look further back. Here we go. And it kind of goes across. It's right across. Oh, yeah, it's huge. It's going to need to be kind of folded a little bit. It's okay. How about I fold it just entirely in half and use it that way? That would work. And the curtain looks really funny on the original. I don't know if it's just because um, it's old and parts of it have worn away. That's what I'm assuming. But we're going to go ahead and cut this at an angle, I would think. And I don't know how wide I need my curtain here. Um, I usually do about a yard, I think. So let me go ahead and measure that. So now we're going to pleat this. And it looks like the original... It is hard to tell. I can't tell if the curtain's like pushed underneath the bonnet. Or if it's like worn away. It looks... Maybe like box pleats? Let's try box pleats. So I'll sew that in. Smooth out the trim while we're at it. And then we can put on flowers. And ties. I gotta figure out these ties are they sewn in on the okay, they're sewn on, on this side, on the um, outer side it looks like. And it doesn't look like they have functional ties, which are smaller ties. It looks like just the one pair. But I actually really like this. I really like the black and the yellow. I know y'all can't see it very well on the screen, but it looks really good. I'm gonna keep working with this piece because I don't like how it's sitting. But I do like how the curtain is. So I will just sew that down and um, I'll see you when we're ready to put on flowers. I think we'll start with this top side, which there is not a good view of what's going on up there, but it looks like maybe roses. So I bought some little roses. I'm going to cut off these really long stems. Maybe. There we go. Okay. I have two of them here. Spread them out a little bit. And I have leaves. So I think we'll just put these on. It looks like they're pretty much on the top. There's this like, little dip here that I need to hide anyway. So I think I shall just put them right here. And they'll do, serve two purposes. I need this way. I don't like that. Okay. Like this. That'll be fine. What I understand, some movement of florals is somewhat desirable, so we're going to sew them down, but not like really sew them down. And to hide the stems, we have the two little leaves. Just going to put them here. And I don't see leaves on the original, but I don't you know, not really see leaves, so we'll put them up here. So it looks like on 
the opposite side on this side. It had some sort of velvety flowers. I found these. They look very close to the original. Um, and then I had one velvet rose. So it looks like they're pretty much concentrated to like right here on the bonnet. I think I'll sew these in first and then we'll do the uh, other bits. Bonnets are one of those things I tend to bleed a whole lot when I make bonnets. There's already several drops of blood on the bottom side of my curtain here, so I should poke myself again. That's what made me think about it. Alright, so that should be fairly well attached for that. I really like those flowers. And it has some leaves over to the whatever side this is for the flower. I guess it's my right side, so we'll call it the right side. And their rose is bigger, but I was kind of like it's very clearly velvet. And there weren't a lot of options for velvet roses that were this color and shade. So I took what I can get. Let's stick this pretty far in there. That's not going to work. It's just too, oh no, it'll work. Here we go. A little fuller and they're a little lighter than the original leaves, but I think they'll work. All right, so there's the outside done. Inside, I have one more rose, one more thing of little rose buds, and I have lots of little filler flowers. I wanted another set, oh I do have, no I don't, I do have one more set somewhere of the um, flowers we had on the other side, and I have one of these. By the way, these had some really off colored leaves, so I just kind of took them off. Thankfully they came out really easily. I'll save these for another project. They were just very, they were not the same color as the rest of this. So I have this, I have all this. Let's figure out how we want to put this together. I don't have to use all of them. It would be easier to do something like that and do the filler all in the middle. So I think we'll start with those. If I wanted to, I could use these two, but I don't think I will. And here she is. I think she turned out lovely. Uh, the ties are a bit wide, um, but again, I was using a picture online to try to guesstimate how wide and how much I needed. So that was a miscalculation on my part. I think three inch would have been better uh, and closer to the original that is. But I think overall it's still a success. Uh, here it is from the side and the back. Other side, with, I think this is the, yeah, with the pretty flowers. Yes, so overall very successful. I am very happy with it. Um, definitely different in color than any of my other bonnets, which is a good thing. I didn't want to add something that was similar to what I already had. So in terms of colors, yes, it's very different. I would never have chosen yellow for myself because I don't think I look good in yellow. So um, well, this one's kind of like light and buttery. It's not like a really deep, rich yellow, which I think is why it's okay. Um, but yeah, it's not something I would have chosen, but I'm happy I have it now. Uh, the only thing is I do have a straw bonnet in my collection that's okay, not original, but one of my bonnets that I wear often, and it's same style, same time period, also straw, so I guess I really didn't need another straw bonnet at this time period, but at the same time, it's very different from that one. That one's brown and it's turned entirely a purple uh, and white and cream, so this is a different color scheme, which means it'll go with different dresses, so I think it's acceptable to add to the costume wardrobe. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a higher brim bonnet than I usually make. I tend to like the closer ones, and I tend to do a lot of early war events anyway, so the closer to the um, brow, or the closer to the head ones, seem to, you know, do better for that time period anyway, so it's a little different. But I do need a few more of those bonnets that are just that midway between the super tiny Empire bonnet that comes in like 1864, and then like the earlier time periods. So I really like the late 1850s and early 1860s bonnets. Um, that are kind of more like a halo face. I like those, but the trimmings are still kind of concentrated up here. But once they start getting to the high brim spoon bonnet, I'm really not a fan. So I tend to not have a lot of those in the costume closet. So it's a good thing to add, even if I have one nearly exactly like it. It's different color scheme, so it's good. But other than that, I think we did a good job um, taking the original and and kind of recreating it. There are a couple of flaws. Um, Obviously, the, the giant ties, 
probably not really what I needed. Um, I think the curtain is good for what it is. I think something is going on in the picture with the met one. Either parts of the curtain are missing or um, it's just flipped up underneath the bonnet and it's hard to tell from the picture what's going on. So um, I think we did okay with that. But there's just that one tiny little dip in the bonnet here. And I'm not sure what I did wrong there. If that was like a, a fitting issue or a seamstress issue or what that was. But it's covered up by the flowers so it's okay. It's going to work. You can't really see it from either side. You can see it when it, you're looking here. But most people aren't going to be looking here because I'll be facing them. This is going to hide it. So I think it'll be good. It may need a bonnet stay eventually, simply because um, I, I can move around and talk to it just fine. But it is wanting to slide off my head slightly, and I think a bonnet stay would keep that in place. But for now, it's good. And honestly, um, I've been moving around it for a second now, and it still feels fine, so I think it, it'll be okay. But if I got into any wind, it'd probably fall right off my head. So, although my hair's doing a pretty decent, decent job of keeping it in place. So maybe the hair will keep it in place. That's kind of the point. It's the hair and the bonnet stay together are keeping it in place, plus the trimmings and that sort of thing. So um, hopefully it'll work. But yeah, I'm very excited about it. I'm glad we got this one done. Uh, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I wish I could have figured out what the little dots were in the original. I don't know if they're beads or what, but I couldn't figure out how to add them, so I didn't. Um, and I don't have clear enough resolution of the bonnet to really tell what they are anyway whether it's just like straw decorative work or what. So left that part out. But other than that, I think it's a pretty faithful reproduction of the bonnet itself. I think the shaping is pretty good for what it's worth. And so, yeah, I'm happy with it overall. And I hope you enjoyed the bonnet making adventure. So have a fantastic week and I will see you in the next video.